Yep, I've got another video from World History Official trying to prove the Earth is flat. Once again, I ask if you go to the original video, link in the description, that you do not harass the author over the robo voice. The author has claimed in the past to have a speech problem. I'm already going to make the author look really stupid for their claims. They don't need more grief over their disabilities. Now, on with the train wreck. Hi, how are you? Um, all right, I guess. Welcome to my channel, World History Official. I have to ask, why did you call it that? I mean, you're not official in any capacity. And you don't talk about world history. I mean, this video is on the Flat Earth, a conspiracy theory so easily debunked. People like me, with a high school level education in science, and... The capacity to read can debunk your nonsense. So your entire channel name is a lie. But I digress. In this video, I would like to discuss about satellite. Not one person has the absolute right to claim their complete flat earth theory is the correct one, and that all else is confusion. But by working together, individually studying, debating, being open, and creating tangible pieces of work, we can find the truth together. The words tangible and truth are going to bite you right in the ass later on, lady. The best part about World History Official is they give you their source. In this case, all their so-called research for this video is supposedly from one book. Satellites are a hoax and the Earth is flat, easily proven. The authors are even listed. Brett Salisbury is a known writer of conspiracy theory books and has authored such gems as 10,000 Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, Sodium Bicarbonate Cures Cancer and We've Known It for 100 Years, and The HIV Hoax Easily Proven. Dr. Lawrence Cohen is a common source for Brett, appearing in a vast number of his books as a source alongside Ace U.S. Intelligence. According to the cover of the book in question, he's supposed to be an ex-intelligence agent along with the person referenced as Ace which also shows up in a lot of Brett's books. Oddly enough, neither actually publish anything unless it's in Brett's publications, and I can't find anything about these people outside of what's in Brett's own works. So we have no idea if these are credible sources, or even real people. Worse, these sources helped on books about big pharma, religion, politics, and the like. So even if they were experts in one given field, they can't be experts in all of them. So the only thing we do know is they're conspiracy theory crackpots, first and foremost. Do you know the real reason you see a full, half, and no moon? Very simple, and is the secret of the United Nations. The United Nations wasn't founded until 1945. We've been studying the moon for a lot longer than that. So if it's a secret they keep, who kept it before that? It's amazing how your video doesn't waste much time with anti-government conspiracy nonsense and jumps right into the deep end of the batshit crazy pool. I thought you were going for tangible and truth. Why do you think the moon doesn't show its backside? because it doesn't have one. Here it is. This was shot with our Deep Space Climate Observatory satellite, located about a million miles away towards the sun from us. The side of the moon facing us on Earth would be in shadow, while this side visible from the satellite is fully illuminated. Here's shots from the Lunar Orbiter, mapping the entire surface of the moon. And here's just one of the pictures from the Soviet Luna 3 probe that was launched in 1954, shown beside the more recent lunar orbiter image for comparison. The moon has a far side. We've seen it repeatedly. But let's hear your crackpot theory. What happens every month of every year? It begins to show its true shape. 1. The moon is nothing more than a luminary. Enoch Chapter 72 2. There is no light, because the moon has nothing on its backside. Um, your idea that it's a luminous disk is disproven by your own images. 
You showed this image of several shots of the moon. You'll notice that if you compare them, the lunar surface doesn't change, only where it's dark. Were this something hanging in the air with no backside and turning the lit side away from us, the surface would rotate, not have a shadow creep over its surface. It gets worse as you move on to the next point you try to make. 3. The moon has curvature, but is not a ball. As the moon shines, it proves it's not a ball. Imagine a ball, exact shape of the moon. Earth is a circle. Isaiah 40 verse 22, with a tent or a dome. What's science saying now about this? Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up. Back that ass up. You stopped at, imagine a bowl, as if that proves your point. But it doesn't. A very brief glance of the images you provided demonstrates your claims are false, but you couldn't even be bothered to back them up. And this discounts the last video I did on this, where you claimed the moon wasn't an object so much as light shining on the inside of a dome. Which is it now? You just moved on as if your claim was just obvious, and jumping into Bible quotes and what does science say about that? Well. Science demonstrates most of the claims made by the Bible, where it even tries to make factual claims, are wrong. In fact, you are about to get into that yourself without realizing it. From Inquiry's Atra website, there are an article, Talk About Firmament. In short, they said, the scientists know the invisible shield exists. They are trying to determine how it was formed and exactly how it works. I put link on the description about this article. I'm so glad you did. It saves me time looking for it so I can read it, which you seemingly didn't do. You seem to have stopped the headline in the words Invisible Shield and stopped caring what the thing actually said. The article talks about the Van Allen belts, the multiple Van Allen belts of radiation shielding Earth. Yes, supposedly before the research was conducted that this article reports on, it was thought there was only two Van Allen belts. The claim in this article is there might be three. This has nothing to do with a solid dome over the Earth, and not only doesn't back up your claims, but refutes them. Your own source, the one you looked up and provided to us, disproves your claims, and you couldn't be bothered to even read it before you trotted it out as proof of a firmament, and yet you eagerly put it up as, what science says now about the firmament? Nothing. Not a damn thing. I, I seriously need face protection. This lady is going to make me facepalm so hard while I go through this video. Direct from Fakeipedia, mean Wikipedia. The Global Positioning System, GPS, is a space-based, satellite navigation system that provides location and time information in all weather conditions, anywhere, on or near the Earth where there is an unobstructed line of sight to four or more GPS satellites. The system provides critical capabilities to military, civil, and commercial users around the world. The United States government created the system, maintains it, and makes it freely accessible to anyone with a GPS receiver. Yep, aside from the fakeopedia crack, you got it mostly right. GPS works on a fairly simple system. Several satellites, at current count about 24 in total, orbit the Earth. They are controlled from the ground to maintain their orbit, and they are routinely replaced as they break down. There are six orbital paths, with four satellites in each path spaced apart equally in their orbit, and they orbit the Earth at a rate just under every 12 hours. Here's a picture representing the orbits. They work on a very simple system. Each satellite sends out a signal regularly. This signal consists only of two pieces of information, the satellite's position and the time it sent the signal. That's it. The signal takes time to get to you. Your GPS records the signals from the satellites and figures out the time lag from when the satellite sent it to when it got to you, relative to the other signals it got. It can then plot out where on Earth these signals would meet to figure out where you are, like in this image. The infamous GPS, a space satellite system, anywhere in the world, yes? I'm laughing. 1. How come, when anyone in the world with GPS, travels from Southern California with their fabulous GPS systems, 
whether it be car or by phone, no longer receive GPS at the literal point of the Tijuana border. Oops. So, are you claiming the only place the GPS doesn't work is right at that location? Like, does it work up to when you get to that point, cut out, and then start back up on the other side? Or are you claiming GPS doesn't work in Mexico? I mean, planes use GPS to know where they are on the globe. Boats use it for navigation. If you're having a problem with your GPS when you go to Mexico, get a better GPS. A car GPS, the kind mounted on your dashboard, only works for whatever maps it's got in it. My old GPS loses track of me on one highway north of Toronto because the map it uses doesn't realize I'm still on a road because they extended the highway after my GPS was made. It still tracks my location, but the computer spazzes out and thinks I'm off-roading. You no longer have it. And again I quote, The United States government created the system, maintains it, and makes it freely accessible to anyone with a GPS receiver. There is no obstruction at the border and beyond. In fact, the beach is 9 miles west. Keep in mind, another blunder on GPS satellites near the Earth, where there is an unobstructed line of sight, to four or more GPS satellites. Answer, I guess the Tijuana Mexico border, doesn't speak satellite English, I'm laughing. Ugh. I love how smug flat earthers get when they're so ignorant. Here's a review someone wrote on TripAdvisor about how hard it was to find a hotel in Tijuana. They drove all around Tijuana with their GPS, but the hotel wasn't listed on Google Maps. Their GPS worked just fine. Here's a picture of a forum post people made about how they had shitty cell reception in Mexico because they had no data plan that worked there, giving options for downloading the maps for Mexico ahead of time instead of relying on the Google Maps app downloading the map as they went, so the GPS will work flawlessly. Your issue with the Mexico border is either you're using a car GPS with no Mexico maps programmed in, or your data plan for your phone doesn't work at the Mexico border. It's your problem, not the GPS. The world isn't flat because you're too stupid to call tech support. Hello, customer service, this is Steve. I'll skip ahead a bit because this lady's constant attempts at jokes in the next bit are not even the least bit funny. I'm here to debunk pseudoscience, damn it. The next time you hear global or globalist, just laugh. And look for Anderson Cooper's head with a spinning globe behind him to make your head spin, like 99% of the population. I truly feel sorry for most people. Most of you are so gullible, and say this daily, our government would never try to fool us. Welcome to Robot Nation. <laughs> oh, that was funny, oh boy. And not for the reason this lady might think. I'm laughing at someone using a robot voice accusing people of being robots. The irony. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Back to the crazy. The Earth is not spinning on its axis, you dorks. This is well understood in the intelligence community and the UN. Take a look at their logo. A model of the flat Earth. I will get back to them in a minute. That's not a model of the flat Earth. You'll notice there is no Antarctic, and the southern continents are weirdly shaped. It's a stylized globe flattened out to show the various nations that are part of the UN, and done in line art so it's easy to put on the logo. It was originally conceptualized as a top-down look at the globe as if looking down at it from the North Pole. Here's the original prototype version, where if you notice, some of the southern continents are cut off. The modern logo was redesigned to fit those continents on. Yes, he is ridiculous. Anderson Rod Cooper. Why so mean to Cooper? Don't be sad, Andy. She's just jealous you still look sexy for your age. How come this is the coverage area of Sirius Satellite Radio? Oops, just the United States? I'm laughing. There must only be satellites above the United States. No, the satellites orbit the Earth. The issue is that the satellites don't broadcast the signal, they re-broadcast it. It's not like the satellites have radio jockeys aboard spinning your tunes and giving you news. The people broadcasting that stuff are on the ground. You see, the radio stations are on the ground. They send their transmissions up to the satellites, and then those re-broadcast it in real time back down. 
Once the satellite passes out of range of where the ground stations are sending the signal from, they have no more feed to rebroadcast, and go silent until they go back around the planet for another go. The only way Sirius Radio could broadcast all over the globe is if the satellites were the actual source of the broadcast. You aren't demonstrating a flaw, you're demonstrating how much tinfoil you wear. But here is what NASA shows with a CGI picture. They prove. Nice fake satellites. Um, that's an artist's rendering of the paths of GPS satellites. Specifically, GPS satellites. You can tell by the fact there are six orbital paths, as I explained earlier. This image is used to explain how the system works for instructional purposes. Why would you expect them to try and take actual pictures of the satellites for that? What excuse can they think of next? When you hear it, laugh. It's not possible for a satellite to know borders. And they don't. But the signal from the ground does know borders. I mean, does this person bother to do any kind of research? I mean, I hear flat earthers tell people they do research and tell others to do their own, but this lady has not even done the most basic homework on the subject she's talking about. I can find out the explanations and easy refutations for her nonsense in minutes on Google. To be this ignorant, it's just... it boggles my mind. In fact, a satellite knows no boundaries. But if they're not really satellites, then what's happening? It should be called GPS, or ground-based antennas from radar to GPS. It's all ground-based. I will tell you how GPS works in a minute. It's old technology, folks, and it's all ground-based. Oh, this will be good. Lay it on me, lady. So what is GPS? Here you go. Why do I need a satellite in the top left corner if it needs a large base tower to communicate? The fake satellite on the top left is to prove how everything really works. All from the base towers. You need a cell tower to talk on the cell phone, not a satellite. Welcome to GPS folks. Except there are no towers in the water, or even in many places on land. I mean, when I go camping for my LARP, I lose cell reception, but I can still use my GPS. Cargo ships and airlines use GPS out in the middle of the ocean to track their location. When I visit my parents out in farm country to, in southern Ontario, my phone loses all signal after a certain point, but GPS? It works just fine. What, do we run power cables or solar panels all over the globe to every mountain and every corner of the ocean, mounting giant towers, which in many places we can tell there aren't any, to send your location? And did we somehow arrange this giant global conspiracy with every world government, purely so the U.S. could take all the credit for GPS? Oh, I bought you another box of tinfoil. You seem to be running low. The United States government? A joke. I'm proud to be an American. But the bullshit is to stop. The angle is the dead giveaway too. The higher you go, the less angle you need. This antenna picks up all digital signals and will remove dish and direct TV that you pay for. You are getting hosed or scammed or hoodwinked. Welcome to the United States of America. You went from GPS to television satellites. Again, this shows you don't understand the subject matter. I mean, you titled this video GPS is a hoax. Sorry, you actually titled it GPS is hoax. But you keep talking about television and radio satellites like they're the same thing and work under the same principles. And they don't. Much like the radio satellites for Sirius Radio, DirecTV satellites aren't where the signal originates from. It comes from a ground station. Yes, those Muppets you enjoy watching on TV for your education are all filmed down here, not on a satellite. The ground station sends a signal up to the satellite, and the satellite sends it back down. When the satellite moves out of range of the station broadcasting the signal, it stops sending the signal. So your dish needs to be pointed towards where the original signal is coming from, but upwards to catch the satellite at the right angle. The higher you go, the less of an angle you need, because there are less physical objects in the way of your dish. You also need less of an angle depending on how far away from the source signal, as the signal may be coming at you from a fairly shallow angle. But because you don't know the difference between satellite TV and GPS, you mix up the two, 
and how both are completely different systems and make it out like some kind of proof. You can build one, a simple analog antenna, and it will get digital from most hardware stores. I'm sure, the Radio Shocky can explain it to you. Even the FCC explains, you only need old VHF for digital. The 70s rapid airs, as they were called, is all you need. Um, I hate to break it to you, but digital TV is different than satellite, and analog and digital are two types of transmissions. You see, not too long ago, car radios were analog. The signal coming in from the radio antenna translated directly into sound waves. But more modern cars were being built with MP3 players and more advanced interfaces, like being able to display the titles of songs. Digital means that instead of broadcasting a sound wave, they broadcast ones and zeros. Binary code. This allows them to broadcast more information than just the music, and a lot faster. And the music is less likely to fade in and out due to signal loss. It still does, as you lose parts of the signal, but it's a more sharp drop-off, and you don't see as much signal loss while driving normally. This amounts to better quality music. Television did the same thing. TV used to use analog transmissions, but moved to digital as computers rose in popularity, and television started to become bigger and with greater resolution. Eventually, entire industries shifted purely to digital and stopped supporting or broadcasting in analog, since analog couldn't support high-definition video. But regardless, digital TV you get from an antenna is being broadcast from an antenna on the ground. You won't get it in locations out of range of the broadcasting network of antennas. Places like my parents' home can't get TV like this. There's no antenna out there in farm country. But they can get satellite TV if they chose, though they just use cable TV. The channels broadcast over digital TV are not necessarily the same range or even providers as satellite, and some channels only broadcast over certain satellite providers. You're comparing apples and oranges. As for the rest of this person's video, I'm going to skip it. As you can tell, the person who made this video doesn't even know the difference between GPS and the satellites giving them television. They just seem to view satellites as some nebulous, magical technology that does everything, because satellites is fake. It's all part of some giant government conspiracy. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for me. If you enjoyed this video, remember to mash that like and subscribe button. If you enjoy this content or have requests for future videos, leave a comment or send me a message. If you want to be kept up to date on when I post videos, feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And as always, I will see you next time.